Aloha and welcome to Holistic Wellness Revealed. I'm Letitia Sharp and I'm here today to reflect on this journey with Think Tech over the last year and a half. Um, it's a little bittersweet having this episode here with Think Tech because it is the last episode that I'll be filming. And it's been quite a journey. Um, I can't thank Think Tech enough uh, for believing in this concept for this show and for providing the platform where we can have these civil journalists <laughs> come on and really just bring to light the things that are happening around our community from different perspectives. So thank you so, so much, uh, first and foremost. And also another huge mahalo I would like to say before I get into this is to Christine Linders. Um, thank you, Christine. She was a host on a show with Think Tech for four years. And, and when she uh, retired her show, she thought of me. And I just can't thank you enough, Christine. Thank you so much. Because the name of my show, as you know, is A Holistic Wellness Revealed. And I must say that I have had so much of my own holistic wellness and healing revealed to me through filming this show. And it's been delightful and joyful. And it's also brought a lot of tears and um, some insecurities have cropped up and some self-doubt. And I'm so grateful to have had this opportunity to be able to work on all of those things. I mean, my second show, <laughs> having only done this once, and my first show, I played it safe. I had Christine on as a guest, and she's an amazing guest. She's an amazing host. But I knew that if I failed and started to crash and burn, that she'd be able to carry me. So that was a real safe choice for my first show. And I also wanted to honor her. Um, and my second show, I had an amazing guest lined up and she got so sick. She couldn't even, she had no voice. And so that wasn't going to work. And I made a last minute decision to do it by myself. And how did that work out for me? I'm going to just kind of share that story first, because there was a lot of healing that happened with that. And it's this behind the scenes action that people don't really know about. You think when you see the end product that those people have it all together and they're just, they're always on or, or, or whatever, you know, you don't see their vulnerabilities. You don't get to connect with all of the doubt or all of the reflection that happened that maybe wasn't super gentle with themselves. So I decided to keep the same topic, which was a huge topic, grief and um, gratitude. And I feverishly was writing down my notes like two hours before I filmed going, oh my gosh, I don't have any questions to ask anybody. What do I do? I'm like, it's okay. I was just on a mission. So I was on task. I was writing down all the notes. I showed up. I had a lot of grace with uh, the technical crew just encouraging me. And um, I finished the episode and I went to my daughter's room because she was here and she was um, available. And I said, I tanked. I did terrible. And I started to cry. I was bawling, actually. Ooh, it's bringing some emotion up right now. And she said, Mom, come on. I bet it wasn't that bad. I'm sure you did fine. I'm like, no, I was 
a sloth. And I just started berating myself with all of this really harsh criticism. And that is one of the biggest, um, that's one of the biggest things I've learned from this show is how harshly I criticize myself. And the show actually wasn't that bad. I didn't completely tank. And, <laughs> and Isabella said, oh, mom, you know, what would you tell me if I did a speech at school and I didn't think that I did a great job? What would you say? And I'd say, well, you know, shoot that next basket. You got to let it go. I'm chalk it up as a learning experience. And she said, so mom, you'll do better next time if you didn't do how you wanted to this time. And so that was huge. And I really kind of took that opportunity. Sorry, <laughs> my eyes. <laughs> I uh, really took that opportunity to start to look at why, why I was criticizing myself so harshly and why did I have this feeling of needing to be perfect and needing to put on this performance where everything was correct and I never made a mistake and I never said um and I never like all these things and through that I realized that all of the things that I've been taught up until now have been a contributor to this healing process. And that's what I'd like to share with you today is, um, is some of the key points of, of healing and sharing and being able to really be in our holistic healed, healing, well state as, you know, these human experiences that we are. Um, first of all, I'd like to bring up vulnerability because vulnerability is one of the key components to us being able to connect with each other. Um, if I just put on this perfect face, which isn't even possible. Um, don't even really like that word. I don't like to use it. Um, then I wouldn't be able to connect with people who maybe have felt self-doubt or people who have maybe felt, you know, like they could never do something like this. I have a friend who is an amazing vocalist she's a singer she's traveled all over the world singing and she said girl I didn't used to be confident about my singing but I decided that's what I was going to do and I just started copying other people who did it and then I just got a little bit of a training and then I just did it and maybe it didn't sound great but I just kept trying and like I said she went all over the world um singing and everything and it's things like that it's that vulnerability she didn't always have it together she didn't always have a stage ready voice she worked at it and i think that that's one of the things that we kind of forget is that you know mastery or the road to mastery takes time and it takes work and it takes being vulnerable and it takes connection and finding your way and loving yourself through it and lifting up some of those harsh criticisms that maybe we don't realize that we're doing and that we're inflicting upon ourselves. So that vulnerability and connectivity aspect is a big one. I encourage and invite every single one of my viewers out there to really take a look at where you're being vulnerable and uh, notice the connection 
that you're going to get when you actually do open yourself up to that vulnerability and, you know, be, have discernment as well. Don't just go out and be all vulnerable and like a huge crowd. <laughs> uh, or maybe do. If that's your authentic self, which leads me to my next um, component of healing, which would be that authenticity. And um, being your authentic self really can take some practice. It can take some unlearning of the things that we've learned since childhood with our society, the way it is, with our family makeups, possibly with our school systems. Um, just with every contributing factor in our life the way it is. And finding yourself again and really being able to stand in that authenticity takes reflection. And oftentimes that reflection is through other people's eyes and experiences with other people. And that leads me to another super um, strong and potent part of this healing process is that anything that is reflected back to you is a reflection of inside of you, whether it's something you've already worked on and it's coming back up, bubbling back up to the surface for you to be able to maybe take another look or to maybe celebrate that you're not there anymore. Or um, maybe it's your first look at it and you don't even want to look at that. And those types of experiences, bottom line is, is that there's nothing outside of yourself that isn't inside of yourself and finding friends and partners and experiences in this life that can support that reflective process in like a healing and loving and kind and as gentle as possible with <laughs> deep healing <laughs> doesn't feel gentle sometimes um that is you know that's the key so look around you and, and really evaluate are these the people are these the environments that are going to be lovingly supportive to a reflection of myself and what i came here to learn and these learning experiences as this human being, this human in this experience being a reflection of what you came to learn. So um, I feel like, first of all, I should give like a big thanks to all of my teachers. I'm gonna start with my mom. Uh, I spoke about her a lot on this on this show and all the time. She's one of my biggest teachers and loving reflections. My dad uh, as well. My daughter, my daughter's father, my husband. I don't like the word ex. And I heard that term husband and I thought that's perfect. It's not derogatory in any way. Um, I'm going to actually look at a list because I wrote one down. <laughs> um, oh, so any friend that I've ever shared tears with or laughter with or had a disagreement with, um, thank you, because that's helped me grow and be this more whole version of who I am. Um, thank you to all of my teachers, my formal teachers, uh, Noah Batlin, BJ Borden, uh, Keoni, Hanale, Kalo, uh, Kale Nohea and Laakea, um, Sandra Ingerman, 
Ross Cook. There's Marisha Murnowska. I'm getting ready to go on a beautiful healing retreat with her. These are all, and that's not even all of them, but these are all very big influences on my continued learning and healing and growth. And I'm just forever grateful, eternally grateful to all of them. And, and, you know, also my informal teachers, the people who teach me every day, the, the person in the car in front of me that is going so slow when I'm in a hurry. And I just, have to learn about being time instead of rushing time and finding grace and finding a way to, you know, be loving to them and to myself. Um, my clients, my guests on this show, uh, my students, uh, it just all the informal teachers out there too that happen. My dogs, oh my gosh. And which leads me to what? The earth, the land, um, the waters, whether it be the ocean or whether it be um, the air, it can be the rivers. Lots of healings happened on rivers in the ocean. Um, my tears, there's some waters for you. Um, the sacred flame. Hmm. Yeah. So all of these healers and teachers on this planet that I just give thanks and gratitude to. And that's another huge component to finding your wellness and your holistic wellness that I've mentioned it time and time again on this show gratitude. So definitely sink into that gratitude, people, and, and that, that will take you far. And it will uncover those places in you where uh, you might be wildly surprised about how you love those parts of you once you really sink deep into gratitude of all things the shadows and the lights and the quote unquote goods and the bads and the positives and the negatives you know all of those things it's all learning people it's all healing it's all growth uh may not feel great at the time and it gets you to your next level so um i do want to highlight um, some healing teachings from you that were taught to me in such a concise and clear and loving way by Keoni Hanale. And if you ever have a chance to do any classes or workshops with this human, I would highly recommend it. Um, you can look him up, kohala.net. He has things running online. I pray for another in-person with him someday. But one of the ways that he teaches is through the Mu teachings. And one of the courses that I found instrumental to my growth process was this divine feminine and divine masculine ah, exploration and finding what that means and really being able to dig deep inside of me and look at what harms me, look at what the cure for that is, what heals me on the other side of it. Um, and I'm going to share in the you know, the name of, of vulnerability with you, what those things are for me and the things that have harmed me. And remember the whole reflection part of it. This is not necessarily things that are done to me. These are things that 
I am reflecting out into my environment so that it can come back to me and I can find my strength and I can find my healing. And one of those things, and I, I mentioned it earlier, is self-doubt. Uh, I, t- I tend to doubt myself a lot. And when I see that for what it is, and I step outside of that, and really step into my sacred prayer that lives within me, I expand. I start to expand. And that authentic part of myself begins to shine through. Uh, Another thing that I feel has harmed me is separation. This feeling of being excluded. And But really, if I fine-tune that and bring that down to the nitty-gritty of what that is, it's um it's separation because there really isn't any separation we are all a part of this collective consciousness collective um humanity collective experience as our our essences and once I really recognize that that's what I'm creating and how that takes me away again from my prayer and makes me feel unsafe, that is a key factor that I can see. And when I can see it, I can acknowledge it and I can adjust. I can recalibrate. I can recognize it and move forward and grow from it and let it go and love it and be like, oh my God, thank you. Thank you so much for bringing me that so that I don't have to keep doing it. (laughs) I can let it go um, in a loving way and know that, oh my gosh, where did it serve me? It got me to here to where I can, I can be and have this feeling of connection with all things. And so that is one more that I'd like to bring up as comparison. I, and I still do it and fall into it. And I'm so grateful that it revealed itself to me. And that's what this show is all about, is the revealing. And in the revealing comes the revelation. I had a very smart person say, you know, uh, you may not want to use revealed in the title of your show because that denotes having a revelation. And after doing the show for quite a while, you may not have revelations. And I just thought, oh, crap, what kind of hell would that be to not have any more revelations? Oh, no. And I was really clear at that moment that. I had, it was my duty to keep reveal in the title of my show because it would inspire me to find the revelation, to find that reveal of the healing. And so, yeah, so those are the things that have harmed me. And so now let's move on to the things that heal me, the things that make me feel safe. And basically what those cures are is for me breath communion which is the opposite of separation and trust really sinking into trust and the truth of what is and what my essence is and through that i've been able to be able to resource this safety this feeling of safety from within from deep within and create and know a prayer that I can communicate to my heart. And and so my divine feminine is creating this prayer and my divine masculine is able to clearly hear and work together with that feminine and bring it out into my external experience so that I can bring it to life. I can bring that prayer to life. I can bring that sense of love and safety 
from the inside of me outside. And so on this last episode with Think Tech, I really would like to invite each of you, if you feel called to, to explore. Explore what all of these components of healing are. Explore what your big reveal is. Explore what you feel has harmed you. And this hasn't been just a weekend retreat or something like that that I went through. This has been culminating over my entire lifetime and brought to me so succinctly through the teachings of Mew over a very intense an intensive three-month um, course, and it continues to find its way into my life daily. So really explore what are the things and define it down. See if you can bring it into after the paragraphs and, and the pages of what's harmed you and the stories. See if you can find a way to succinctly have a few words that will be able to help you recognize when you're falling back into those patterns. And then after you do that, really feel into what helps you feel safe from the inside, what helps you to poof, diminish, not diminish, what helps you to deactivate those harmful things that you've gotten into the habit of believing in your life and really find that safety from within yourself. Um, look at how you can be vulnerable in your daily life. Be vulnerable with your partner, with your kids, um, with strangers. Uh, once you resource that safety from within yourself, that will get a lot easier. <laughs> uh, really work on being your authentic self. And remember that everything outside of yourself is coming from inside of yourself. And there is no difference of that. Every teaching from anywhere around the world has always had a part of their teachings that include this. And again, I'm just, I'm so grateful on those notes. I'm going to wrap this up and I'm, I'm going to leave you all with some inflection. And I invite you again to go deep and to explore these parts of yourself that are going to reveal your for perfect healing and your learning and bring you to your revelations. As always, I'm super thankful to this platform for being able to bring out and talk about these things. Um, I'm super grateful for all the viewers and I can't wait to see you again in maybe another way, maybe the same way in a different way. And most definitely, I will see you again, heart to heart, and I will feel you. So mahalo, mahalo, mahalo. May your lives be filled with blessings and light and love. Aloha. Aloha. We want to announce that ThinkTech Hawaii is moving into a new phase and will not be producing regular talk shows after April 30th. 
we will retain our website and YouTube channel and will accept new content on an ad hoc basis. We are also developing a legacy archive program to provide continuing public access to our content. If you can help us cover the costs of the transition and the development of our legacy archive program, please make a donation on thinktechaway.com. Thanks so much. Aloha.